Hi, my name is Nona willis Aronowitz, and I'm the co-author of Girl Drive, Crisscrossing America, Redefining Feminism. A lot of different factors went into it all at once. Um, we started to think about the trip in November 2006, right after, right after actually my mother passed away. Um, her name was Ellen Willis. She was a pretty influential feminist writer. And um, both Emma and I started thinking about what feminism meant to our generation. And we, we sort of felt like this legacy was slipping through our fingers in many ways. But at the same time, we were just 22. We wanted to take a road trip. We were kind of um, getting, trying to get out of our comfort zones and talk to women out, outside of New York City and outside of where we grew up with. Um, and we talked to about 127, well, we talked to 250 women, but we um, concluded 127 women in the book. And we went through dozens of cities. I'm not sure how many states we actually drove through, but we probably went to about 20 states, um, just talking to young women about their lives and ambitions and what's important to them, and whether or not any of the, that relates to feminism. I definitely feel like I knew about it earlier, and I never actually shied away from the term feminist. I never really had a problem with it. It was more um, taking on the term for my own and using it as one of my main identities. Um, I think my first feminist moment was asking my mom to cancel all the subscriptions to the teen magazines that I had, like Seventeen and YM and um, all those things that made me feel really like crap about my body, about my relationships with guys, about the clothes that I was wearing. I was kind of like making lists for myself of what I had to buy and what I had to do. And then I was just like, you know, this is BS. I just want to um, be my own person and, and be free of all this stuff. So I kind of wrote a screw you letter to the editor of Seventeen Magazine and kind of sought my kicks elsewhere. I was not necessarily surprised by all the negative stereotypes they had attached to it. I was more surprised about um, the disconnect between their feminine, between their um, gender consciousness and their relation to feminism. Like, a lot of women were very, very conscious of sexism and were conscious of how their gender affected their life, but they didn't even attach a lot of these issues or these concerns with feminism. Like they didn't even realize what feminism really meant. And I, I mean, I kind of had an inkling of that, but I was so surprised about how many young women didn't even have the first idea about what it might entail or any feminist history. Some of them had never heard of Gloria Steinem or Angela Davis, or if they had, they, hadn't, they didn't really know who they were. So I think that sort of disconnect was really surprising. Let me start by saying I love Thelma and Louise. I think it's a totally kick-ass feminist movie. But they were on the road for very different reasons. They were running away from sexism. They were running away from their boring, oppressive lives, and they had kind of snapped, you know? I think, if anything, our road trip was more similar to Jack Kerouac and Neil Cassidy because, you know, they were kind of on this trip to self-discovery, and they had time for fun, and they had time for adventures, and we just wanted to have the female equivalent of that. I mean, of course, you know, there's um, there's girly elements to our trip, and of course, it's not going to be the same as um, two guys on the road. But we didn't want to be characterized as women who are running away from something. We were running towards something. I mean, feminism has a really white history to grapple with, and put a band-aid on. The second wave, the um, burst of feminism in the 60s and 70s, was kind of focused on middle class white women's problems. Even though there are, of course, amazing feminists of all different races and different classes, but they weren't the ones in the spotlight, and they weren't the ones the media focused on, and they weren't the ones that went down in the history books often. So I think modern feminism really has to be more intersectional and realize that racism and sexism and classism, ableism and all these other isms aren't in competition with one another. Like, I, I mean, I really get annoyed by the, the whole oppression Olympics aspect of activism because all of these things collaborate with one another and you can't really attack one without attacking the other. And you can't really understand one without understanding the other. So I think a lot of women of color and women who are otherwise marginalized by society 
did see a lot of um, sexism and just gender di dynamics working in their life, but they didn't necessarily um, realize how it can combine with all their other identities. I just think it would be a lot easier if feminism was something people learned about in school and, and it was part, more part of our historical fabric. I think we keep reinventing the wheel because we keep having amnesia about what happened. So that's a big problem and, and hopefully books and projects like Girl Drive will kind of continue the conversation and make sure that these, these histories don't get erased. I don't think so because if you find another term that means women's equality, it's just going to be maligned the same way feminism has and it's just going to have the same connotations. I think what we need to do is re think feminism as more of a lens and a pervading cultural sense rather than an identity or a label or a movement that has a few issues and a few icons. I mean, I identify as a feminist and I think it can be a really empowering identity, but it doesn't have to work like that. And you don't have to claim the term like, oh, I'm a feminist in order to use feminism in your daily life. You know, whatever you're doing, if you're a mom, if you're a you know, barista, if you're a street cleaner, if you're a lawyer, if you're a politician and you're also using feminism, then whatever you do is going to be imbued by that feminism. First of all, I think it's partly because of the backlash. Um, people are really, really afraid of feminism and try to put, them in, put it in boxes. Um, but really it can mean anything you want it to mean as long as you're aware of gender dynamics in society and as long as you see how gender affects your life, whether you're a man or a woman, and that you admit that sexism still exists because if you open your eyes to what's going on, it's pretty clear that we have a lot of work to do. And I think um, feminism doesn't necessarily have to mean one thing, but it does have to stick to certain principles. I do think that you can have a sort of everyday feminism, like if you affect the people around you, that's activism enough. I mean, I think when people think activists, they think, you know, taking to the streets with signs and, you know, or just taking action in this really deliberate way. You can be your own kind of activist if you just raise the consciousness of people around you and have discussions with your friends about what gender means or um, what any you know, what any kind of cultural pattern means to you. So I definitely don't think you need to be an activist to be feminist. No, not personally, but I would love for Girl Drive to inspire Girl Drive Part 2, because we did, I mean, we didn't hit up every single area of the United States that we wanted to, so feel free to fill in the gaps. <laughs>